Hello ladies and gents, welcome to We Chit Chat Wrestling, I'm Michael Hayes and this is your weekly Raw and Smackdown recap, a little late, but it's okay, you're still getting your recap and all in time for this Sunday's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, but brought to you by Smackdown Live, it should be a great pay-per-view, but let's get into recapping shall we, we're going to do it in chronological order, one at a time, let's see how this goes, so we started of course with um, a Monday Night, Monday Night Raw. Uh, Monday Night Raw was based around one thing and one thing only, and that was the uh, the reformation, if you will, of the Shield. The Shield, of course, was massive in 2012, 2011, with Roman Reigns, uh, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. And this whole episode of Raw was leading up to the very end, when we got to see all three of them nod at each other. And I'm not going to lie, the internet broke down. The internet fell apart because you know it's it's cool. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Who doesn't love it? Um, but let's see what happens. Yeah, it's kind of the, Raw was was um, was the equivalent of, uh, of the Men in Black neuralizer for the rest of the episode. You don't remember the rest of the episode. Everything that came before that ends bit didn't matter at all because um, it was just simply a prelude to that main big look how cool this is um, moment so uh, the issue I have is it's not very um, it's not, it hasn't been built very well so to give you context Roman at the moment is wrestling the Miz for the Intercontinental title for some reason um, Cesaro and Sheamus Shamaro are interfering for some reason and Braun Strowman is beating up Gene Ambrose and Seth Rollins for some reason. And Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas still don't matter. So, you have all these storylines going on at once, and it's not really coherent, but it just feels like they've been put into place because they need to happen for the ultimate thing, ergo the shield getting back together. Um, it's, it's nice... Um, seeing Roman getting his ass kicked um, it's nice to see it don't get me wrong I marked out when Roman's in the locker room at the end uh, sat there and he looks up to see Dean Ambrose approach him no words said they weren't needed um, and then Seth Rollins appears and again no words and then they nodded I marked out like crazy because it's the Shield, definitely one of the best stables the WWE's had in a very long time. But who are they up against? Are they up against Ron Strowman, The Miz, Shamaro, Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, the club are in there as well? That's way too many people. Um, unless they're trying to do a The Shield the strongest thing in the world thing. But even so, I have issues with how it's being done. It's obviously being rushed so it can get done for Survivor Series. Because Reigns has things... Uh, Reigns, needs to, um, Reigns needs to win the Rumble, should I say. Because Reigns then goes on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Spoiler much. Um, so it does feel really rushed. Um, which means there's no groundwork. So this is just on top of anything. Um... I mean, they're just hoping, I think, that this big reunion is going to render all of that moot, if you will. Um, will it? Probably. It probably will, because it's the Shield and they're massive. Getting back together, of course it probably will. But should it? No. No, it shouldn't. Um, but we'll just have to see how that goes. I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see what they do at TLC. That's the next Raw pay-per-view. And then Survivor Series, obviously, and see what happens. But um, let's try and talk about the rest of the show, shall we? The rest of the show was... Well, it was a big, fat nothing burger. That's what it was. It was empty calories. Um, Enzo, it, started, it had Enzo Amore tearing down the entire cruiserweight division. Which was, yeah, it was fun to hear. But it then led to an anticlimactic moment of introducing Kalisto. Uh, who's the newest member of the division. Kalisto, of course, famed for being on Main Event, that TV show that no one watches. Um, 
So, they'll have a good match. Um, it'll be a man who can wrestle against a man who's the only drawing power that the Cruiserweight division has at the moment. We'll see how it goes. Um, we saw Nia Jax being, uh, she's back uh, as Alexa Bliss's gatekeeper for some reason. Um, we don't know why. The last time we saw them, they were fighting. And now they're friends again. And they, uh, all they could think to use Mickey James at the moment, who's on the roster for, is to call her old um, and to be way too exciting in Kurt Angle's face. Because um, Mickey and Alexa are having a thing, and she got called old. She, she's like 30 something, that's not old. She's not old at all, but wrestling for you. Um, you had Elias, uh, he covered um, some grunge band and took the piss out of wherever they were this week. Um, Seattle or something. Um, now, you also had Jason Jordan. He's now running with Matt Hardy because they don't have anything for either of them because Jeff's injured and will be for a long time. So they're now a tag team, I guess. Um, at least this way Jordan isn't going to get turned on anytime soon. Um, what else was that? Yeah, you had um, outside the women's champion uh, title picture, you had uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks are really good friends, don't you know? Don't you know how good friends they are? And Emma is all about herself in the most annoying way imaginable. I mean, it was an interesting episode of Raw. Oh, also, Bray Wyatt uh, may actually be Sister Abigail himself. So who knows, we maybe get Bray Wyatt, Eater of Worlds, dressed as a woman. Um, but Raw did what it should do, and um, the post credit scene means you're going to come back and watch it next week because of The Shield. So, who cares if three hours of that show was just crap? The post credit scene means that you're going to come back and watch it because it's Raw and you want to know what's happening there. Me personally, I don't know. Three out of seven? It's not great. But, hey, you know, the internet have had some interesting reactions, generally just all about um, yeah, just generally all about the shield. I mean, there's a lot of respect going around at the moment for the Miz because I think the Miz is the only thing that's holding this all together at the moment, and rightfully so. You know, he's probably one of the best intercontinental champions of all time, probably the best heel in the company right now. Rightfully so, um, and it proves that you don't have to be a top guy to have a tight um, to be the main guy. That makes you don't have to, you don't have to have a top guy having a top title to be really important. You can have undercard guys who are just as important. I mean, yeah, we'll have to see how it goes, but it wasn't great. It wasn't great. Let's talk about SmackDown. That's fun. It's not fun. Smackdown was, Smackdown was missable this week. For a go-home show, it was really, really missable. It was in Denver. It wasn't great. Um, the main event, of course, of all of this is a face-to-face. -face, uh, the main event angle was advertised as a face-to-face -face between Shane and Kevin Owens. As the go-home angle for the main event of Hell in a Cell. Prior to the main event segment, Sammy Zayn found the commissioner backstage and warned him this is a Kevin Owens that Shane cannot take lightly. Sammy has known Kevin a long time. You can tell the man has snapped. Uh, using Sammy as a long-time friend and long-time enemy of going to paint KO. It's a nice touch. Um, it sort of builds itself a bit because at the moment KO looks a little bit, a little bit sort of, what's the word, cowardy. So it builds him up, makes him look better. Even so, um, this isn't, I'm not. The match will be a spot fest. It'll be fun. But Shane was, um, he went down to the ring anyway to confront um, Kevin Owens. Uh, he made the Hell in a Cell match fools count anywhere. Which means in the ring, on a small area on the floor between the ring, um, you can make a, uh, you can make a pinfall, of course, because it's only that area. You can't leave the cell. The cell, you can't leave. It's, you're stuck inside. It's not true. They're leaving the cell. It means they're going to go all over the place. That's how they're going to make this a spot fest. They're going all over the place. Which should be worth a watch. You know, this Sunday, if you're up that time at night, 
watch it. It'll be fun. I'll have a fight everywhere. Why not? Um, Shane then called out Kevin to come down to the ring, but Owens responded from up in the crowd. He refused to come to the ring, so Shane went to him and was ambushed in the concessions area. Owen lured his boss into an, uh, into an area where he was vulnerable for an attack, powerbombed him through a merch table. Um, it's very it's very much leading. The, the, the general rule in wrestling is if you're strong on the go home segment then you lose the pay-per-view event. I don't want Kevin Owens to lose this because he's a wrestler. Uh, he's not part-time. He should win this. But anyway, uh, Kevin then came back to the ring, explained how he's going to use the Falls Count in the wrestling relation to unleash punishment on Shane O'Mac everywhere. Um, he said that Shane won't have to jump off the cell because he'll throw him off the cell. Uh, of course, Shane isn't going to stay down through one table. Uh, he made his way back to the ring, fought the prize, fight to some more. However, Owens got the upper hand, delivered a headbutt like he did to Vince a few weeks back, and then delivered his pop-up powerbomb laying at his boss. There are two forces at play come Sunday. There's a Shane McMahon that won't stop getting up, and a Kevin Owens that won't stop putting him down. Uh, Kevin is going to have to tap into his most vicious side, I think, um, to keep an angry and motivated Shane from getting back up it, it'll be fun it's not going to be a technical wrestling masterpiece but it'll be fun and fun's good um, so yeah I mean that's that's a good good from SmackDown um, the WWE title match though which should be the main event is kind of undercard right now and uh, that's not so good um it's not. It should be the main thing. You should want to watch the WWE title match, but it's not. And I'm happy it's not because it's not good right now. Um, it's basically to, to, in the show tonight. Uh, it's the show opened with Shinsuke saying that Jinder's words, his incredibly racist words, won't hurt him, and he'll win at Hell in a Cell. Uh, he's interrupted by the Singh brothers, who start introducing Jinder Mahal. We've seen this before. We got uh, Nakamura got rushed. Tried to fight back. The Singh brothers then helped, and Shinsuke was. I mean, I mean come on, I've heard it all before. Hopefully, Shinsuke will win because um, Mahal stood tall. Don't think he will though, because for those of you who care about this sort of thing, WWE is going to India uh, shortly in November time, and they'll want an Indian champion to promote the product in India. Oh man, it's not going to go well. It's not fun. I'm glad it's not main event. Let's talk about something else. Uh, let's do it, yes. Let's talk about the Usos. Usos! And um, my girlfriend's over there, by the way. And uh, she has no clue what I'm talking about. Genuinely, if you're listening to this and you're not a wrestling fan, you will have not a scooby doo about what I'm talking about. Even my cat is looking away from me right now. Um, anyway, Usos came out and said... I mean, they, they cut an amazingly fiery promo, like proper burn, burn on you, New Day, burn. They're so good heels. They are so good at being heels. The New Day come out, uh, a little bit more serious than normal. Um, and they spoke about how the teams have been stealing the show, and rightfully so. They have been stealing the show for the last four months, and it was done really well. They didn't fight each other. They just used words. And oh, I, this is going to be the match. Like if like Shane and KO, that's yeah, that's all, that's just like look look at this table, look at this table, look at me fly through the air. Um, this, however, this match, this match will be very very good. And this match is probably the one that I want to watch most. Um, they didn't have to do much to sell it. But they both cut great promos, and it and it works, and I'm very excited. I just like pumped for it. I'm like, yeah, I want to watch this now, but I can't because it's Friday. It's not now. It's two more days away. Damn, it's two days. I can't wait two days. I'm gonna have to wait two days though. I don't have a time machine, and if I did, I wouldn't use it for wrestling. I'd use it for world domination. Um, so uh, what else is going on? Oh, Bobby Roode. Glorious. I'm not going to sing. My cat 
and my lady partner over there. Neither of them want me to sing right now. Um, but you know the tune, probably the best entrance, and this this whole this whole squabble. It's not a feud. This squabble is about uh, entrances and Dolph Ziggler's hatred of them. Uh, but Bobby Roode, this uh, um, on SmackDown squashed Mike Kanellis. <laughs> Remember when he was big? Um, but hey, I got to hear the theme tune. I like that. Pause this. Pause this right now. Go and listen to Mike Kanellis' Power of Love theme tune. Right. Anyway, Ziggler come out. Told Roode that he's got a cool entrance of his own. Then he grabs a marching band drum and an air horn that uses part of a purposefully lame entrance. And the crowd did nothing. Didn't even boo. That's the worst thing. At least get something. At least Roman Reigns gets booed. You know, at least the Miz gets booed. Ziggler gets nothing. The crowd just that's this, this segment is man. I'm hungry. Let's go merch stand. Let's go get some burger. That's what this segment is. Um, then the uh, the show off or Ziggler um, told Bobby Roode uh, he's only sex, uh, successful. He said sex. That's not right. Successful because of his entrance. And in Hell in a Cell, he'll actually have to get into the ring. And he also said that he's going to have his own epic entrance at Hell in the The thing is, we all know, if you watch NXT or TNA, I won't mention those words, Impact or Global Force Wrestling, or whatever it's called now, uh, if, you, if you've if you ever watched anything that Bobby Roode has done, he's an incredible wrestler. Um, but, uh, I mean, don't be wrong, the, the entrance team has helped Bobby Roode. It really has helped him. But he's a damn good wrestler. Now this match should be a great technical match. But there will be no storyline in it. Because it's just boring. It's literally arguing over music. And what they wear. I mean come on. Talking of something that isn't substantial. The women's match. They did a standard thing of. Let's put you in a tag match. Before the uh, before the main. Before the. That's the go home segment side. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm dying of man flu. Um, and a tag team match put Carmella and Natalia against Charlotte and Becky Lynch. Heels won, which hopefully means that Charlotte will win because I really want Charlotte to win. She's the best wrestler on there. Um, they they won with sneaky tactics. Don't get me wrong. Carmella used some money in the bank briefcase. Blah 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 blah. Um, it was fun inconsequential though Charlotte is challenging Natalia Carmella starts a briefcase and uh, Becky Lynch is still alive so hopefully Charlotte will win because she didn't stand tall and hopefully she'll carry it until a long time and then face Ronda Rousey that'd be good yeah do that book that WWE and then we come to the uh, United States Championship. I it's such a shame because I like Baron Corbin. You don't, you Baron Corbin. I like Baron Corbin. I love Ty Dillinger. I love AJ Styles. It's awful, just awful. Baron Corbin had a go at Ty Dillinger. He lost. Afterwards, AJ Styles got a promo saying that Corbin isn't putting in the work, and that's why he couldn't beat John Cena. Couldn't cash in his money in the bank. Can't beat Ty Dillinger, and he's going to teach him that lesson at Helen's, uh, Helen the South Side. Why isn't this a triple threat match? I really hope it's a triple threat match, because Ty is awesome, and he's a great wrestler, and his gimmick is amazing. The Perfect Ten is an amazing gimmick. Erg, I'm a, I'm a knocked man. I really miss Ty. You know what? Pause this, or do it after. Do it after. Go to WWE Network. Find Ty Dillinger stuff in NXT. He's that damn good. He's that good and look what they're doing with him on the main roster. Why I'm scared. For when, like, Adam Cole Bebe comes up. Or what they're going to do with Asuka. Or, or Peyton Royce. Or any of them. I'm terrified. Because this is what they're doing to Ty. Anyway, what else also happened? Oh... Oh yeah, Randy Orton did a match against Aiden English and won. 
Rusev tried to attack him and Orton won. Uh, oh, actually, here's one for you. Um, the Fashion Files, which is probably the best thing on SmackDown right now. If you don't know, um, Tyler Breeze and Fandango, or Tyler Breeze and Chet Cheddarfield, or The Banker and Chet Cheddarfield, if you're really into South Korean regional wrestling, um, are doing parodies of uh, the, the X-Files, they did uh, Bones, they've done any major like um, mystery program. They've copied... And they were supposed to do I can't, some other really famous one, uh, like Goodfellas or something. Um, and it was advertised, and then it didn't happen. So much so, it was so advertised that uh, Tyler Breeze put on his Twitter saying, "Are you ready for the Fashion Files tonight?" And that's not happened. Instead, it's now on in Hell in a Cell. But it, hopefully, it'll happen because um, it, it's. I'm getting quite worked up over it, and I shouldn't be, but hopefully it will happen. So, overall, better than Raw, it's skippable, quite underwhelming. Um, the segments that represented the two top pay-per-view matches, KO and Shane and New Day and Usos, did, did well. The rest of the show, not good. It's something you could watch on YouTube, basically. You could watch this on YouTube. Go onto WWE's YouTube channel and watch it, and you get the majority of it. The issue I have now is having the sales this Sunday, and right now the only things that I think I'm looking forward to is the KO Shane match and the tag team match. Don't care about the US title. Don't care about the WWE. Excuse me, WWE title. Don't care about the women's title. That's not how I should be. Right, that, uh, that's not how I should be. Um, excuse me, we're both ill. If you can hear my girlfriend coughing, we're both very ill. Right now. But needless to say, I'm... Yeah, so I gave Raw a 3 out of 7. I'll give this a 4 out of... Three and a, 3 and a half out of 7. It's not good. It's not good. Um... Yeah, it's it's not good. But yeah. Hey, you know it could be it could be worse somehow. They could not have the two cool matches. That'd be rubbish. But um yeah, so what I will do is next week I have more time off from work uh, next week. So I will do a Helen Cell recap. And Smackdown Raw recap. There is a couple of top 10 lists that I'm working on at the moment, but editing takes forever. Um, literally forever. I'm the worst at editing in the world. Um, seriously, I think there's some apes with Sony Vegas in front of them who can edit better than I can. But that'll be, that'll be up soon. A couple of good lists. Hopefully not too long away. Hopefully my mic issues are solved. The last episode I did, a um, little catch up, the mic sounded uh, fuzzy. Hopefully that's fixed now. If it's not, I'm sure you'll leave me a comment telling me. Um, but that's uh, that's the recaps done. And um, yeah, uh, I'll, there'll be a top 10 list up soonish. Recap next week. And yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, quick shout out to everyone who comments on YouTube and gives me recommendations. I like that. I love that. I love uh, constructive crit constructive criticism. Uh, I like being told what I can do better. Please do tell me what I can do better. Um, hit the like button as well for me. Because that just makes me happy to see likes. I like likes. Likes are nice. And um, hit me up on Twitter too. At WCCW Podcast. It's on the screen. It has been for the whole show. Um, so hit me up on Twitter. And come say hi. Give me recommendations, give me things you want to see, because, you know, again, I'm all about recommendations. Tell me tell me what you think I should do. I'm working on getting uh, a couple of collaborations. I'm speaking to the guy I want to collaborate with. Probably Sunday I'll speak to him. Um, and hopefully we can organise something, something from his channel, something from my channel. should be fun, because he's quite a noob at wrestling, but he's a really nice guy, he's a really funny guy. So... I know what I'm talking about. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. It's basically really me picking on him for about half an hour. It's going to be great fun. 
And um, yeah, I guess I'll hopefully see you guys soon. Have a lovely weekend. Enjoy Hell in the Cell. And um, yeah, see you soon. <laughs>